एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग एपिसोड ऑफ एमबीए टॉक्स विद करियर 360 टुडे वी हैव विद अस मर्लिन हु इज अ लॉ ग्रेजुएट एंड शी इज आल्सो परस्यूड हर एमबीए फ्रॉम आईएमके टुडे शी विल शेयर विद अस ऑल अबाउट हर जर्नी एंड हाउ शी मेड इट टू आईएमके सो वेलकम मर्लिन थैंक यू व्याख्या हाउ आर यू आई एम गुड हाउ आर यू डूइंग आई एम आल्सो गुड सो मर्लिन फॉर एवरीवन हु इज वाचिंग दिस वीडियो टेल अस अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट योरसेल्फ Hello everyone. I am Merlin Tiga, born and brought up in Raurkela, Odisha. I have recently graduated from IIM Kori Kod. I did my undergraduate in law from National Law University, Raipur. My pre-MBA work ex is a mix of marketing and business development roles. Also had a stint at one of India's top PR agencies, Ad Factors PR. My summer internship was at Coca-Cola India in their marketing team. in imk i was a part of imk's uh, public relations cell managing the social media accounts of the college okay. that's a brief about me looking forward to our conversation okay sure so marlin you were a law graduate and then you had a work ex so what made you you know switch your path to management and pursue mba uh so vyakya interestingly uh being a law graduate i was actually pursuing my career in marketing and business development in the legal domain so uh, even in the legal domain i was working in the marketing space and uh, i also worked in a pr agency so that was pretty much uh, my marketing profile okay uh, so i mean after working for some time i uh, came to the conclusion that a management education would be the right path to pave my career in marketing okay so then when did you start preparing for cat what made you uh, you know start your preparation and what was that moment about tell us a little bit about that i've actually taken cat twice one immediately after college which uh, i absolutely bombed the uh, uh cat uh, test uh and the second time i took uh, in uh, 2021 so uh, i started in on december uh, 2020 I mean, most engineers would start around June, July. But coming from an arts background, I already knew that uh, I had to prepare well, and I needed more time in my hands. So started uh, uh, during my job as well. So I mean, uh, I would start. Uh, I started with uh, QA, quantitative aptitude, and DILR. VARC started a bit late, around uh, June, I would say. Uh, initial months, I just focused on the uh, quantitative aptitude and DILR. That's great. so uh, you know you gave cat twice so what was it that you found different in both of your attempts like what was it that you found you know that worked for you the second time and did not work for you the first time okay more than uh, i mean uh, uh, how the questions were i mean it was more about my personal strategy in my first attempt i was bogged down with many resources like i would, i had a collection of books collection of materials and a lot of resources to go to which which was not how i prepared for my second attempt here i had like i mean majorly i uh, refer to arun sharma for quantitative aptitude roda ravi prakash's video dilr and the vrc from time material i had all these like our limited resources uh, i mean not really limited resources like i had uh, minimized my resources from which i would want to prepare so uh, that was the streamlined approach for my second attempt okay so uh, in all three section of the cat which section was it that you found challenging in both your attempts yeah i mean it has to be uh, dilr so uh, because even for quantitative aptitude you have a certain set of syllabus but dilr was something i was completely unexposed to and uh, coming from uh, a law background i hadn't studied uh, maths or uh, i had uh, i hadn't had any exposure to maths for the past 5 years and uh, even with my 11 12 it was commerce so i had some exposure to maths so uh, for dilr it was especially challenging for me and i mean uh, even for dilr that was for dilr it was the only uh, section for which i had solved the most questions uh, from time material okay that's great so uh, like you said that dilr was new so it is a concern for most of the students because there are there is no concise syllabus for dilr so what yeah. is it that you want to share to students who are preparing now that you know these are certain important topics for dilr or how one can improve in dilr 
So I would say start with the basics first. And uh, if you already know that DILR is not your greatest strength, I would say uh, go uh, approach uh, DILR step by step. Don't try to solve all questions in a day. Like uh, you could graduate from easy to medium to difficult. And uh, also give significant time to analyzing what you're doing wrong. A lot of people focus on solving the questions really fast. And sometimes they uh, lose out on silly mistakes, which was also my case. And uh, also not understanding the process, uh, like how you'd come to the process. Sometimes people solve questions and do not take uh, into account the time uh, required to solve the questions. So I would say have a balance of uh, how much time you're taking to solve and also how fast you're solving it. So I think that approach should work. Uh, I mean, by strategy, I mean, you should uh, look at how many steps you can do it in your mind and how many you take uh, a paper to solve. So you should uh, essentially minimize how much time you take on the paper mm -hmm. and you should have more going on your uh, more calculation in your head and uh, less on the paper. So that will save you time. Oh, oh. So uh, like you mentioned about DILR, let's jump on to your quant prep. Uh, how difficult was it, what was it to, you know, build a foundation in Quant and how much time did you take to cover the entire syllabus? Okay, I actually uh, started in December. So till December to June, uh, I could uh, like, I mean, December to June was the entire time I took for covering Quant. And this is without any mocks hmm. because uh, I was just like looking to prepare and understand the basics. I am a very step-by-step -step person. So I started with Arun Sharma and uh, Ravi Prakash's video. So here uh, I looked at, I mean, uh, uh, you should start with uh, how much you're comfortable and with which uh, subject. So even with quant, you have arithmetic number system and all of those ratio proportion. So some people start with number system, but number system itself is very vast. So I would say start with arithmetic or something you are comfortable in and then jump into your uh, eventual preparation. Don't start with something so uncomfortable that you'll be very offered by the very idea of it. So I think that is it. And uh, yes, uh, also in the beginning, what I was trying to do was uh, trying to solve each and every question, even if those were very of very similar types. But I mean, the more you get into preparation and you understand if, you, if you're lacking behind the uh, in time, you'll realize that maybe you should skip a few questions as well, which are very similar. And try to solve more variety of questions rather than solving one type of questions. Okay. So, yeah, okay. that would be. So, are there any, you know, important topics in quant that you think when one should not miss out? Uh, there are no important, uh, I mean, we can't uh, pinpoint into one specific topic that is important or not. But I would say like uh, CAT itself is uh, a game of uh, volume. Like how it's a very wide exam. It's not about uh, which uh, topics are important. It's about how much from different sections you can answer. So I would say that don't stress on one individual uh, topic, but actually look to cover basics of every year. Uh, section and you might want to leave certain sections you're not comfortable with and you might not be able to answer in uh, the final uh, cat uh, exam as well but the uh, but look to cover at least 80 percent of the syllabus or 90 percent i would say 90 percent and uh, look to solve the very difficult questions from those uh, 90 percent of syllabus as well okay and uh, how did you prepare for your varc uh section and uh, you know what was it that you found challenging was there anything that you found challenging in it or was it easy for you uh okay i certainly uh found vrc challenging for me so what uh the preconception for most people is that oh i speak good english or i have exposure to english then i would certainly ace vrc but that is not the case uh, here you're not just like, reading comprehension you need to analyze it as well so even VARC, uh, you should start early. I mean, at least six months in advance. Like most people uh, start their preparation in June. So by June, you should have, uh, I mean, like that is the last uh, month to start preparation. So if you're starting by June, you should look at uh, covering VRC as well. Uh, what I did was read the Hindu regularly. That was also for my general knowledge and also for uh, 
uh, the editorials. The editorials itself have such rich English. So that was uh, good to prepare. And also Eon essays, uh, uh, you could look at that. And mostly solving questions. I did not just go on reading comprehension. I regularly solve questions as well. Because at the end, CAT is about uh, solving the questions as well. Okay. So I had a regular question of that. Uh, is all about maintaining that accuracy, you know, while selecting the answer. So how did you make sure that, you know, you're not selecting the wrong answer and you are, you know, uh, terminating the wrong ones and, you know, finalizing the correct one in the, uh, you know, RC section or probably in parajumbles. So how did you overcome that? Yeah, uh, I... Uh... I followed the elimination method. That is what works best for me. Is like eliminating the wrong ones. Like I mean, the thing, uh, the options that I feel are not the right options, and then eventually reaching to the answer. Some people find it lengthy, but I mean, have your own approach. If it works for you, it works for you. Some people can immediately like I mean, the uh, they or uh, they take the like top two right answers and they eliminate the other one. So whatever works for you, that. Uh, that is good. Okay. Most people uh, essentially take the elimination approach okay. because that is pretty straightforward. Okay. So you talked about how one should, you know, by latest start the preparation in June. So since yeah. it's near June, so how do you think one should, you know, go about people who are, you know, now waking up and you know, want to start their preparation now? How should, you know, they cover up the syllabus and, uh, you know, start the preparation right from the month of June? Yeah, so I mean, if you're starting uh, in June, you still have enough time. What you need is being diligent and giving ample time and uh, covering all the resources. You should also start, uh, you should also look at giving mocks if you are a mock kind of person. And if you're not a mock kind of person, you should start solving uh, the previous year's questions. You'd have solutions online as well, or you'd have those in your uh, uh, prep material as well. It is very important to solve previous year's questions and uh, look at the existing syllabus as well. I would uh, say start with previous year's questions first. That would uh, uh, that would be a proxy for uh, mock as well. And then start uh, with your QA, DILR, and DRC. I mean, uh, you can schedule it according to how you would like. Uh, I was uh, giving, uh, because I was uh, preparing with uh, my uh, job as well. So I used to give morning two and a half hours, evening two and a half hours, and even the lunchtime, I would try to make some time for it. And then Saturday, Sundays were gone. Saturday, Sundays were also fully dedicated to uh, preparing for CAT. Some Sundays I would take an off. Uh, but yeah, most of the time, if you're starting in June or July, so you should uh, look at maintaining a timetable that okay. works for you. Okay. Uh, so you mentioned mocks. When did you started giving mocks in your preparation? What I essentially did was uh, solve last or uh, previous year's question, previous five years questions, and that was the proxy for my mocks. I also did two mocks uh, from uh, time material. So those were it. Uh, I'm not really a mock kind of person, so I stayed away from giving mocks because. Uh, that is not something which is very encouraging to me. But uh, what I did was uh, prepare with a previous year's paper because essentially uh, solving mocks or previous year's paper is not about uh, your accuracy. It's also about your strategy, how you would approach different papers. So that is essentially what helped me. So uh, do you think are there any set number of mocks that one should give? Because si since you said you gave two mocks, so uh, and lots of people st end up giving lots of mocks. So do you think is it uh, necessary to give a lot of mocks or is it just, you know, what one suits for the best? Is What do you think should be the, you know, plan of action uh, when it comes to mock? Yeah. So uh, if mocks work for you, that is the best. If mocks don't work for you, I think you should really look at solving previous year's question paper. So by previous year's question paper, I do not mean looking at the answers and solving the questions. Or uh, even for previous year question papers, sit with the paper, sit with the two hour time duration and solve it diligently and then look at the solution. You should be able to analyze your answers. So that is the approach you should uh, look at. And if you're someone who's encouraged by what your uh, 
score is or what your rank is in an all india mock all of those then i think you should look at, if that is what encourages you i think you should look at uh, giving all india mocks also um, there is no set number of mocks there have been people in imk and different iims who have not taken a single mock and uh, um, have graduated from iims uh, and various other colleges and there are people who have taken about 50 mocks they took mocks every weekend so based on what your approach is i think uh, you should go for it uh, i would say give at least a minimum of two mocks yeah. okay so uh, you know you have a really inspiring story like how you mentioned you used to wake up uh, um, early morning to prepare and you know as you you also used to manage your job with the preparation so is there any advice that you would want to give to working professional who are preparing for cat yeah for working professionals i would say it gets really difficult because uh, you manage your work with uh, the preparation and uh, one would also feel that no one understands uh, what they're going through because i mean with the job they have this uh, um over uh, like over with their job they have this preparation as well so i would say like maintain your time table like in the morning i used to wake up around 5 o'clock because i start my preparation around 5:30 so 5:30 to 7:30 i would have my uh, preparation or uh, like i'd solve mostly qa and dilr uh, alternated for the morning and the evening session i would have qa dilr depends on that even for uh, the lunch break i would try to squeeze in at least one uh, rst even if uh, uh, there is some time like i'll try to do that so yeah that is that is a difficult uh, way to go what where i found support in is uh, talking to my friends they are they are also lawyers who had uh, who are uh, who have graduated from uh, different mba colleges so those uh, they were very much a pillar of my support for me because uh, they had gone through the same thing so i would say having a buddy who's gone through the same uh, um same prep as you and the same uh, journey uh, same journey as thank you same journey uh, as yourself i think that would help yeah and uh, yeah also if you are working professionally i would say like take the sunday off or just reserve sunday for a mock that would be it that's nice okay so uh, like once cat was done and you know the gdpr preparation started so how did you started your preparation and what all did you did uh, when you were preparing for it so i was really treating uh, this cat attempt as my uh, last attempt at cat so i had gone all out for gdpi for gdpi i had uh, enrolled in uh, the b tri program so they have a very short program where uh, they coach you they're very they have very uh, small cohort so okay. they give very personalized training on uh, what kind of pi questions would come and uh, also how you would build your profile like i mean not really build your profile how do you do uh, present your profile so that was essentially helpful i took a lot of uh, mock interviews those were very essential for me even if you think that you are a master orator a natural orator i'd still say that uh, if you are a serious candidate you should look at uh, getting gdpi prep and uh, more often than not in uh, my college i met people who had taken gdpi prep so it was uh, for me when i was uh, taking the gdpi prep it was unheard for me my uh, friends have already done an mba referred me to be try but when i actually went to uh, i am kodikot i understood that so many people actually take the gdpi prep okay. so that is very essential okay so uh, now let's come to the fun part uh, let's talk about your yeah. life at imk so describe to me the first day when you entered the college what was going on in your head okay uh so i mean i still uh, remember the first uh, day very vividly because i was really wowed by uh, the im campus that we have heard of and uh, literally seen in youtube videos so i mean it was very uh, unreal for me that i was actually there right from the gate itself where like you see im kodi code carved to to like going up the hills and i mean uh, first day uh, even if we uh, first there was a lot of like i mean uh, going through orientation going through admission processes it was uh, there was so much going on but still it was very fun and uh, we get to meet new people from 
various uh, uh, states and also uh, uh, the uh, foreign students. So all of those were very exciting to me. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you know, a lot of students are concerned whether they would be able to adjust in NB school like I am. So since you were from a law background, you know, you had a diversity uh, factor in your profile. So uh, was it difficult for you to adjust up to the academic curriculum or anything uh, in the B school because you were from a different background or was it easy for you? Uh it was certainly very difficult. Uh, it was uh, like it was certainly not very easy for me to adjust uh, to the uh, rigors of MBA. So, uh, first of all, if uh, you're from an arts background or like from a non-engineering background uh, or from a non like CA yeah. background, yeah, uh, you not have exposure to most of the subjects, which is your uh, statistics, your accounting, your finance, all of those subjects where the CAs and the engineers have an advantage at. You'd also have your advantage in other subjects like marketing and strategy if you're from a non-engineering background. But those, comes in, those come in second year. For the first year, pretty much if you're from a non-engineering background, you're struggling with the uh, syllabus. And uh, so I was. But I mean, the idea is that you should be able to prepare in time. And uh, I mean, don't do last minute exam prep because that will not lead you anywhere. Uh, I would say, like, ask help from your friends if you're not able to solve certain questions or solve uh, or don't understand the subject at all. You should start from the very beginning because if you uh, start asking your friends from the very beginning, then they would also be able to help you. In the last moment, you won't be able to understand the entire syllabus. Okay. So that is something that is very essential. Uh, especially, like, if you're from a non-engineering background, I would say once you've converted a... Uh, converted a call to your uh, college, then I would say start preparing uh, uh, for basic uh, statistics that you would need. I think that would really help. And uh, if you're not someone who would want to prepare in advance, I would say like start uh, working on your uh, uh, statistics and yeah, CV also from the very first day. Okay. Since you mentioned CV, let's uh, go on to your summer preparations and your internship preparations. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, people say that once, as soon as you enter the college, the SIP preparation starts. So was it the yeah. same for you? And how was it? Yes, yes, absolutely. So uh, for the summer preparation, those start in no time. Okay. So if you're someone with uh, WorkEx, I think you should look at getting the certificates uh, in advance if you can uh, from your uh, office, uh, from your company. Or uh, if you're uh, someone who's, who does not have in work it, I think you should uh, look at uh, uh, bringing in your internship certificates. So here with the summer prep, it is essentially you can divide it into CV drafting or CV building. What you would say, writing the CV. And second also would be the uh, prep part, which would be uh, divided into further two parts. That would be uh, your uh, solving cases, which would be like your marketing cases, strategy cases, consulting cases, essentially. And second would be your uh, CV uh, interview prep. Okay. So those are the three things you need, CV, uh, your interview prep, and also solving cases. Okay. So I mean, these three things come together. So the earlier you start, the better you get. And CV is also a very rigorous process. So the more you get it reviewed from your seniors, uh, that only helps you. Okay. What did you do when you were preparing for your summer uh, placements and did you uh, do any course or anything particular that you did to, you know, make it stand out uh, in front of the recruiters or anything that you would like to share with us? Uh, okay. Uh, so for my summer prep, uh, I uh, did my marketing prep. So apart from my, because I already had a marketing profile CV. Yeah. So uh I mostly looked at uh, new campaigns as well. So uh, websites like Social Samosa uh, and uh, different uh, agencies like Shebang mm -hmm. or uh, different thought leaders. That is what I looked at. Mm -hmm. So I had like two, three campaigns prepared. That is also very essential when you're looking to prepare for marketing. Mm -hmm. So apart from theoretical questions, you should also have an idea of the campaigns that you're looking at because a very... Uh, common question is what is your favorite marketing campaign mm. so you should have an answer to that 
So I think that is a must. And that is also, these questions are definitely asked to people with work ex. Okay. Because, uh, I mean, for non-work ex, they uh, usually stick to theoretical questions, like how do you approach uh, GTM, uh, go to market and all of those. But with work ex, uh, even for my summer placements and my final placements, I've always gotten this question. Uh, also, for marketing, they would also look at uh, what kind of marketing that you want to do. So is it brand marketing, marketing and research, all of those. So you need to have a clarity of the roles as well. So uh, that is one thing. You can't just say marketing. So you'll have to say what in marketing. So that is also the kind of nuance they're looking with someone with uh, WorkEx. So uh, that is there. And uh, for preparation, I also solve a lot of consulting cases because that helps overall for uh, any case approach. Uh, so I was actually shortlisted for uh, uh, Google and uh, Coca-Cola India. So Google, I could not convert and Coca-Cola, I converted. So for Google, it was very case-based. Uh, so I think uh, that really, even though it was a marketing role, so that is something that helps uh, preparing the consulting cases because that was the approach you'd follow for any case. And uh, again, the Coca-Cola interview, that was uh, very, uh, that is typically how you'd uh, assume your marketing interviews are very friendly and very professional and comfortable. They would uh, talk to you very, uh, uh, I mean, they'll, they'll be very conversant. It would not be a very much of a QA. It would be a very much of a conversation. Okay. okay. So like you mentioned, you converted Coca-Cola. It's a really big band. So tell us about the experience while you were interning at Coca-Cola. What was your profile and what was it that you were working on? So Coca-Cola India internship was really a dream come true. It was one, um, they call it the mantra cohort or the mantra internship program. So where they select uh, people from... Uh, all the B schools. Okay. So here I was in the marketing team. You can get into the marketing team, the operations team, okay. uh, customer and commercials, all of uh, the other teams as well. Uh, so here uh, you'd be given, uh, every person would be given projects uh, uh, for their team and they have to work with, uh, they have to produce results for the project in those two months. Okay. So essentially you're uh, looking to execute a small part of uh, a bigger project. Okay. So that is uh, the kind of uh, internship uh, roles that we get. Also, they have a very interesting thing called uh, the pitching. So once you qualify with your projects, you'd go further and pitch it to the leadership team as well. And Coca-Cola obviously has a lot of, uh, they give a lot of exposure to the leadership team as well. So you get to interact with uh, not just the best minds in the country, but also to uh, leaders from the greatest FFCGs in India and okay. abroad. Yeah. Okay. So this internship was in Bombay or in Delhi? It was in Gurgaon, Delhi. Okay, okay. So you uh, de then you know lived for uh, lived in Gurgaon for two months for the internship. Yeah. And so, is there anything new that you learned? And you know, because usually internship period for two months, you know, people also enjoy during that time and learn. So was was that experience those two months for you? Yeah, those two months were certainly fun uh, because, I mean, you get to hang out with your uh, co-interns after after your office. And also, you get to meet a lot of uh, people from other colleges uh, staying for internships. So again, you end up staying in PGs or apartments or whatsoever. And you end up uh, meeting a lot of new people. So I think uh, that itself, that summer experience itself, from any B school that it becomes very enriching because of that as well. Yeah. Because you don't just learn in the office, but you also meet peers across B school after office as well. Okay. So that is something that was uh, very fun, but also enriching at the same time. Oh, that's great. So uh, from, you know, summer internship to let's just dive into the final placement. Was it as hectic as the summer placement or was it a little less hectic? What was the process like? It only becomes more hectic from summer uh, placements. So final placements is also something which is, uh, uh, which is very tedious and you need to work on it way in advance because uh, sometimes people, including me, I redid my CV for my uh, final placement. So if you're uh, someone looking to redo your CV, uh, 
uh, and present it in a better way because uh, I mean, once you do your summer internship, you realize the gap in your CV or you understood that you should, how you should present your profile. So, or uh, some people definitely want to switch domains as well. Earlier they were targeting marketing and now they want to target the strategy. So you should really look at uh, how you'd like to uh, put forward your profile. So that is the kind of story that you should work uh, towards. And also your uh, um, interview prep, that is also something that uh, you should look at doing. Again, here also, we need to take a lot of mock interviews. So uh, even uh, me, I would take a lot of mock interviews with my friends and uh, with people from different colleges as well, because even people from my college, I felt like I had a certain uh, familiarity to them. So I called up people from different colleges that I knew from my internship and uh, from uh, just like from LinkedIn. So yeah, just okay. taking mock interviews, that was something that helped. Oh, that's great. So, you know, now that you've graduated from IMK, now when you look back at the campus, is there anything nostalgic that you get or, you know, one memory that you would want to share with us that will stay with you forever? So now that uh, I've graduated from IMK, I realize how blessed uh, I was to stay in that beautiful campus. Also coming uh, to what I've, I'm very nostalgic about is that uh, we had the best sunrise and sunset in uh, from all B schools, that is what I would like to believe. And the people should come and see it for, for themselves. Uh, so that is there. And also what I'm very nostalgic about is like uh, hanging out in the night canteen with friends, prepping for cases, prepping for placements. In hindsight, that is something that is very nostalgic to me, even though at the moment I did not enjoy a lot of case prep. But yeah, now that is something I remember. So, uh, Marlin, my next question to you would be about an alternative debate that is there around MBA. You know, uh, right now there is a startup boom in our country. So, people, you know, tell uh, talk about how, whether it is a relevant degree or not. So, since you have pursued an MBA, do you think that MBA as a degree is still relevant in the current market or not? Uh, okay, that's a tricky question. So uh, as much as I would agree that there is a startup boom in India, uh, what I would essentially look at, if you already have the skills required for your startup or you think you have the required skills, I think an MBA might not be the most uh, relevant uh, degree for you. But if you're someone who does not know what your startup should be about and what kind of business you're looking at, so I think an MBA is really relevant for you. Uh, even though what an MBA can help you with is looking at the business in scale. So you might be a master of one domain, that is say marketing, but you might not have exposure to operations, strategy, finance, just to name a few. So an MBA can actually help you look at uh, the various domains in uh, give you an all round perspective of various domains. So that is where an MBA can come in. And uh, also with startups in India, uh, so you'd essentially, uh, I mean, I am very pro MBA. So I would say even uh, with startups in India, you would want to have a network of people uh, for uh, growing your startup, be it uh, pitching to the PE and VCs to uh, hiring uh, more uh, talent in your company. So I think that is where the MBA network can come in and be of great value. Yeah. That is my belief. And also, I think that I am tag also gives a lot of credibility to one's profile. Okay. Yes. So, uh, you know, you said you were always interested in marketing. And uh, so tell us a little bit about that domain. So someone for someone who's looking to make a career in marketing, how do you think, you know, that college degree or, you know, that experience has added to you as a marketing professional? Okay. So uh, essentially, uh, uh, with marketing, what uh, I am looking at is brand management. Yeah. So here, uh, you'd essentially need like uh, two and a half years of work ex pre MBA, yeah. or uh, maybe even if you are a complete fresher, that is also totally okay. So that is there, and most of these uh, brand manager roles demand an MBA, yeah. or uh, if you want to directly get into brand manager, or uh, if you're someone who wants to work towards uh, these roles without an MBA. Uh, that would take more about like seven, eight years. 
so that is how much it takes uh so i mean an mba has actually helped me fast track my career because i had 2.5 years of work it and i decided to go to the mba route not just for like uh, fast tracking the entire process but also looking at leadership roles in management because essentially 10 years down the line i would want to become a chief marketing officer in a company and so that is in leadership position my mba degree or uh, my mba knowledge will actually hold me in good stead Yeah. so that is something that i'm uh, definitely looking at and that is something that uh, you should weigh when you are thinking of doing it through the mba route or doing it through the non mba route uh, also uh, for someone who is uh, an aspirant and looking to prepare uh, like i mean pre mba looking to get into mba roles i think you should look uh, at doing internships uh, in different fmcgs or different internet companies say uh, pre mba you should look at uh, Racket, HUL, PNG, or like look at internet companies like Google, Amazon, Mintra, all of those for internships, because that is when you go essentially after MBA. So, uh, having that sort of uh, exposure to uh, these kind of companies already will hold you in good stead when you're uh, uh, doing your uh, CVs. Like, I mean, uh, uh, giving interviews post uh, MBA or for your summer placements and final placements. Okay. because you'd already have exposure to that kind of a corporate setup yeah. so that really helps okay so marlin uh, i have a next question which might be a little controversial but uh, sure since you are a women candidate and you know it's important to ask questions like these uh, the gender ratio in iims so uh, you know because even there is less female candidates who appear for cat so do you think it's is it improving and what was it uh, in your time do you think you know there are more women uh, taking cat and then you know appearing in uh, iim so what do you think was the gender ratio in your time uh okay uh, for iim kodi kod i mean it is known for a campus which has sort of a good gender uh, yeah. ratio uh, but that's just iim kodi kod i'll be honest like i think we had about 43% women candidates i think if uh, I mean, I uh, I might be getting the figure wrong, but yeah. it was like mostly like forty, sixty, yeah. or uh, something of that sort. But it is not the case with most IMs. Yeah. So uh, the gender ratio is not good, and uh, uh, it is essentially like it is definitely male dominated. Yeah. And uh, it is something that uh, women diffi- uh, find difficult to uh, adjust as well. Even uh, you uh, see lesser women, not just the uh, and this. Uh, eventually translates into lesser women in corporate as well yeah, exactly. to see less uh, very less women leaders as well yeah. no matter how much we talk about breaking the ceiling there are only few uh, very few women who break the ceiling even uh, in uh, uh, even in our mba courses we were able to understand that uh, how there are uh, very few people uh, very few women uh, in the leadership uh, position and uh, most uh, women get stuck in middle management so that is also something that uh, we learned in mba how to tackle that so uh, yes that is something of a reality but i think uh, most the gender ratios are improving yeah. so uh, yeah we're definitely going uh, looking in a positive direction yeah. but uh, we are not where we are supposed to be yeah so like your story can be an inspiring story for women who are preparing for cat today so uh, before we wind up the conversation just tell us uh, how you would describe your journey so far right from preparing from cat from the first attempt to now making it to i am and then now graduating from it so how would you describe your journey so far looking at my journey it has been a very uh, enriching and fruitful experience right from preparing uh, for cat to actually uh, uh, cracking the uh, cracking i am kori kod and also graduating with a uh, a good placement so uh, when i look back at my journey and how i was able to uh persevere throughout uh, different uh, times so it when uh, i was preparing we had covid uh, we were working online and also i was continuously because there were covid lockdowns uh, but also like things were opening up so it's continuously shifting back from delhi to my hometown so my cat trip was always uh, was always taking the side seat but uh, yeah now i look back i was able to adjust to all of it and uh, 
being able to concur through all those situations. So that is something which is especially meaningful for me. And uh, I wish the same for every individual because your cat prep, your story of grit and rigor, that is what you keep remembering uh, till, uh, I mean, for years. And that is something that will stay with you, that rigor and that uh, diligence you did for getting into one of your dream colleges. That's so nice to hear. So, uh, Marlin, I'm sure, you know, every student will find your journey really inspiring. Thank you so much for giving us your time and sharing your journey with us. Thank you.